everybody, this is me, Lego My Lego 90 here, and today I'm doing another FNAF video. So there's some stuff on the Fanverse to talk about, and uh, and I do want to share some details on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie sequel. So, so the topic I want to break down is a new uh, Gamesville article. From uh, Kane Carter with Pop Goes Evergreen, as well as the other stuff, and there's might there might be something of Five Nights Candies to show as well. So let's get straight on to it. Okay, so um, what I wanted to break down in this article, so this is on all the Pop Goes games as well as what what other good shit uh, Kane's got. So, um, for Pop Goes Evergreen, I'm gonna read this. Though I have not and will not show anything directly, progress on Evergreen has been quite good. Exceptional in some areas. Like, like that's good. Like, like Kane's making a lot of progress with uh, Pop Goes Evergreen. Garrett has been working on the post-night environments which are extremely detailed areas. They require loose decorations, but each of them also need very specific and important props, which are often contributed by other people with my direction. Some of these props require textures by people like Zara, or I can't really pronounce it, the name very well, they are all super high quality, but can take a while. These props are interactive in a way, so I am adamant that they look the best they can. The team has done a fantastic job. All right, so yeah, I can see uh, the team's pretty working pretty fucking hard as well. We have worked on a new in-engine tests. For the post night environment as well, we we have already done some bare bones experiments in the past, but we'll be getting serious with them soon. I wrote up a large summary of the gameplay for the team to read over before Emil knuckles down on it, and everyone thinks it sounds really good. Obviously, who knows? how it will actually play out, but hopefully hearing uh, that uh, makes you excited. Though I know uh, a lot of you don't care unless there's something to look at. Sorry about that. Hey, it's okay, uh, Kane. You just gotta take your time. Plenty of other things are... are so what I meant to read is... Play of other things done for the game. A huge focus for us has been the menu system, which I've worked on with Derp Me for a while. We've finished the designs for the main menu and phone selection, the token tree, trading card pack shop, save file and sticker selection. Mm, those are a lot of good shit. I am very proud of how these uh, me menus look. I know it sounds like a minor thing, but these are really unique layouts for a FNAF game. Super professional and animated. Dirt Me is a pro at this. I really appreciate his work on the project. Uh, I do know Pop Goes Evergreen is going to be a pretty damn big game. I'm not going to lie. Speaking of animations, the main menu will actually include short intro animations for every level all five nights and five post nights featuring the newly introduced uh, character of the of that level <laughs> meaning when you select night one there will be a short intro animation of pop goes oh cool when you select Post night two, you'll see Falls, Falls Preddy, Freddy, etc. And E Blue, E Breddy has been working on these animations recently. We've finished Pop Goes, Blake's, 
or Pop Goes's, Blake's, and Saffron's. They are tricky, but the finished products look great. Okay, so it looks like uh, the post nights will be all the uh, Falls animatronics, those uh, nightmarish, fucked up toy animatronics. Alright, that's that's very interesting. Yeah, we get to face the Falls animatronics in the post nights. There are actually other environments separate from the nights and post nights. I can't go into where or why these exist, but they do, and they are taking a while to complete. I would say the biggest amount of work for Evergreen continues to be environments, rooms, decorations, styles, lightning, or lighting, I meant to say, etc. Characters are complicated, but they don't take very long. But rooms, Jesus, they can take ages. But we're slowly ticking things off there as well. Also, remember that the Popco stickers added to Game Jill are also made for Evergreen itself. A new one is made almost every week and shown off on, a, on this website, but you should not... Um, should remember that they are basically sneak peeks that collectibles and you'll get an evergreen. Not all of them will be in the game. Some will be omitted, like the baby birds, but most of them. Yeah, the, look at all these stickers. There's even one of candy in that red bird. Okay. I know that mouse character is a new character. Nothing else I can talk about right now, but there's plenty of progress being made. It's not super exciting, but it's mostly modeling props. Like I said, after that, it'll probably be a case of programming, AI and menus, writing scripts, and getting voice actors, stuff like that. Of course, once major milestones are reached, I'll keep you all posted. But for now, it's just monotonous, however you say it, checking off tasks and whatnot. So yeah, we can see some reasons why Pop Goes Evergreen could be the last fanverse title to be released. Now to other pro Pop Goes projects. Pop Goes Arcade. Plenty of people have asked me about what's going on with the Pop Goes Arcade mobile ports. It's absolutely something we have we have worked on, but Neil and I hit a roadblock a few months ago that made development on it, on it kind of impossible. The shader that Emil used to scale the, the, up the sprites from tiny pixel art to big images on the article cabinet screen was incompatible with mobile devices. It, it made everything look very weird and choppy, and I think it was even kind of laggy. Yeah, I can, you can, I can see why... The mobile ports are taking too long to come. And so yeah, we got a shot uh, saying continue to Pop Goes and the Mechanist. Okay. To get this working properly, we actually need click team staff. People who actually work on the software. To step in and help rewrite some code for the shader to work. And though work on this has not completed, sprites do look better in recent previews that Click Team has shown us. And another shot of that. Nowhere near as distort distorted. Not perfect, but I think if we ship the game with this kind of scaling, most people wouldn't care. So it's a good step. Unfortunately, why Click while Click Team works on these technical issues with Arcade, there's not much else we can do but, but wait. 
if if it turns out that there are other problems that make the game incompatible with Android due to how Neil, yeah, how Neil programmed the game for PC, then we may genuinely opt to remake the game in Game Maker or something like that. We have already experimented with Game Maker equ equivalence or equal. Equivalence, I meant to say, of Emil's shaders, and they seem to run fine on Android. But we have, we will continue to be patient and see how things go with Click Team first. It may be smooth sailing from here. Who knows? Regardless, the ports are not canceled. I will let you all know when we're. <sighs> I will let you all know there's news to share. It will it will happen eventually, lol. Okay, yeah, so you can... Yeah, we can see why the mobile ports are taking too long. Especially with considerations that they might remake arcade, you know? Like, test it on different gaming platforms. As for my pop goes, don't forget to wishlist on Steam. Plenty of progress on my pop goes as well, and that this stage is mostly done by our programmer, Potato. Though uh, we are also getting some new music by Radier, I or Radia RC is how you say it. I'm not sure. And recently, a lot of texture work was done by Stupid Butterfly, which we know is Ellie. For the diary pages. Fun fact, actually, my pop ghost was going to include one course word in one of the diary entries. I had spoken to Scott about language years ago, and the conclusion was the same swearing is generally fine in fanverse games as long as it's not over the top and that they aren't. The extreme kind of swears. Blake isn't calling anyone a motherfucker in Evergreen, unfortunately. Anyway, my pop goes was going to have a fairly minor but still sweary swear word. But because it was only one word, it was decided that it wasn't worth keeping in the game since it definitely needed to be displayed as an age content restriction yeah restriction thing on the game pages all of that for one word so it's been con censored slash erased but after the game releases i'll gladly let you know what the word was if you can't figure it out on your own lol <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're working on things like menu navigation, subtitles, balance, and brand new minigames. The Steam page obviously shows one of these minigames. Longest Pop Goes, which is a snake-like game where you collect pizzas as a freaky, wormy Pop Goes. There will be five minigames to complete, and they'll let you unlock the Blake, Sarah, Saffron Stone, and menorah character skins. Lastly, I think we have a release date sorted for my pop goes, but it won't be announced just yet. The game still has some work to do, but it shouldn't take mu too much longer. I will update you on this where I can. So yes, I can see that my pop goes is taking some time, even with some updates to come. And I can see that King Carter is working on other projects aside like Team Fortress Future. So you can see it's that it's one of uh, Kane's main side of projects, but probably what what he's most excited about at the moment. So yeah, pretty much resigning characters. I don't think I'm gonna um, 
read uh what uh what Kane's got for his other projects. But yeah, I can see he's working on a Team Fortress 2 game and a Minecraft game, Ghosts and Graves. Yeah, I'm not gonna read the read about that either. But it does look pretty cool. But yeah, I think that's it for now. Another big post, and I know there's not much visual stuff, but people have been asking for updates on these things for a while, and now I felt it was a good time to get it out of the way. As always, if you have any relevant questions, please ask away here, and I'll, I'll reply to the sensible ones. Until the next one, Kane. All right, so that's uh, Kane's big article on what's going on with Evergreen and all the other Pop Go stuff, and uh, and working on other projects. But yeah, I do look forward to some Fanverse stuff. Like I look forward to the Joy of Creation, which that one's probably the most concrete Fanverse title to come next. Then after that will probably be Finding Candies 4. Also, what I want to show you is this. So yeah, it's basically the Candy and Cindy emoji emojis in a new image. Isn't that pretty cute? <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I know uh, Finding Candies 4 is taking a lot of time, even with the meal still working on Evergreen. And I know he's got any I know he's working on updates for two and three, as well as testing out console mobile ports for remaster two and three. Alright, moving on. Oh yeah. Emil has Finance Candy's fur coming as well. But yeah, again, moving on. So um what I want want to share about for the sequel of the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. Is that I think I might have shared that the oh wait maybe not um so uh, the Five Nights Freddy's movie sequel is gonna likely release and well it is uh, set to release in fall all right I think I might have shared it I'm not sure but it's there's also been some confirmation that there's gonna be a major character doing a big role, which is presumably um, Henry. Yes, I do think Henry could likely do a big role or a major role in the movie. Even though it's been, even though it was, uh, there's been some news that it could be unknown whether if they'll. Wow, well, what. It, well, it's something I want to share with the weather animatronics, although it is probably going to likely be a sequel, a sequel, most definitely, well, with, uh, with Mike Schmidt, played by Josh Hutcherson, making a return, even Elizabeth, uh, they, Lale returning as, uh, Vanessa, and Abby doing part, and William Afton, like, we could still get some backlash, no, um, no, not backlash. What I meant to say, um, flashbacks. I mean, flashbacks. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the sequel of the Finding Sprays movie, although there's still a long way away for that. We know filming will begin in fall, and then we'll release next year. Of course, um, um, who knows who could play, uh, Henry. You know that Matthew Lillard was an actor that got cast as William Afton that hasn't been in movies very much? Some actors I could see as Henry that haven't been in movies very much, um, lately I think could play Henry or either maybe... Jason Lee, that's another idea. 
Maybe John Cusack. John Cusack's another idea. Maybe Brian Fraser. Although Brian Fraser got to make a comeback. But yeah, who knows whether actors who don't who don't attend to play in movies very much anymore that could play play Henry. Of course, Sean Austin would be another idea. But I think this is all I could do for this video. And if you guys like what you saw, make sure you click like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Join my Discord fan server and follow me on Instagram. The links will be in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.